Hello everyone, welcome back for part two of lecture 12, where in this case, we're gonna talk about how you set up iterative calculations for determining your bubble and dew point temperatures. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a sample problem on this next slide, and then discuss how you would manipulate your equations for Raoult's law and Dalton's law for the liquid and the vapor phase in order to solve for your dew point temperature and bubble point temperature. So for my sample problem, we have a vessel that contains 30% by mole methane, 30% by mole ethane, and 40% by mole propane at 10 ATMs of pressure. So assuming an ideal solution, I'd like to calculate the bubble and the dew point temperatures of this mixture of a mixture. Okay. So as I mentioned before, this is gonna be a trial and error type of calculation. This is this is where goal seek is gonna come in handy because you're gonna iteratively be able to solve for your dew point and bubble point temperatures. And so rather than you doing a lot of guessing and checking, Excel will do all the work for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first focus on the bubble point calculation, and then afterwards we'll go to the dew point calculation. And so this is actually gonna build off of stuff that we talked about in part one of lecture 12. So as I said before, we have a trial and error calculation for the bubble point. We know our compositions. We know that the molar composition of of methane is 0.3, of ethane is 0.3, and propane is 0.4. And we're, we're going to say that Z is the overall composition of the mixture. So between the liquid and the vapor phase, 30 mole percent is methane, 30 mole percent is ethane, and 40 mole percent is propane. So what we can do is we can say that we're gonna, since we're focusing on just the bubble point line, we can say that the ZI is equal to XI. And that we're, we can do that because at the bubble point line, we don't have any vapor existing yet. We are right at the cusp where we're, where we're about to form vapor, but we haven't done it yet. And so for that reason, we can set all our ZIs into, as XIs. So now that ends up being our X1, X2, and X3 are our molar compositions. So it's all, all these molar compositions are used in the liquid phase. And so from there, since we're working just on the liquid phase, and as we derived, in the, previous, in the previous part, we said that the sum of xi pi star is going to equal p total. So for this problem, since I have a ternary system, I can then say that the sum, so x1 p1 star plus x2 p2 star plus x3 p3 star is going to equal p total. All right, so we can now use this equation and we're gonna be able to use the Antoine coefficients for, for p1, p2, and p3 in order to solve for our bubble point temperature. Now, what do we do with this equation? All right, that's a good question. So what we're gonna do is a trial and error calculation where step one, we will assume a temperature and that we're gonna do that to find a P star at that given temperature. The next thing we'll do is we'll substitute and compare the left-hand side of that equation with the given P total. So the left-hand side was X1 P1 star plus X2 P2 star plus X3 P3 star equals P total. So we're gonna compare the left-hand side, all of that, with P total. And what we will do is compare them, and if, if they do not match, we are going to adjust, those temperature, adjust the temperature until both sides are equal. Once we do that, we will then have found our bubble point temperature. Okay, and so now we're gonna go over to calculate a dew point temperature, and it's a similar idea, but now for the vapor phase. So if we reset the board, and now focus on the dew point, we know that our Z is the overall composition of our mixture between the liquid and vapor. We now will say that instead of Z equal XI, we will say that ZI equals YI because we're working on the dew point line now. So we should be having 100% vapor. We are right before the point where we will form a, a liquid droplet. And so in this case, we will now say that Y, Y1 equals 0.3, Y2 equals 0.3, and y4 equal y3 equals 0.4. And again, as we as we derived in part one of lecture 12, we have that the sum of yi over pi star equals one over p total. And again, so we have a ternary system, so we now will be able to expand that summation in terms of components one, two, and three. So that we have y1 over p1 star plus y2 over p2 star plus y3 over p3 star equals one over p total. Right, and again, if you had more components, you can expand this summation to incorporate all those additional components. And now we're gonna do something very similar to 
what we did with our bubble point calculation. So we are going to do a trial and error calculation. Again, we are going to assume a temperature, find P star data at that temperature. We will then substitute and compare the left-hand side with the given one over P total. And again, if, if the left and the right-hand side don't equal out, then we're gonna guess another temperature and iterate until both sides are equal. Now, what I hope you, you start to recognize right now is that you would, if you have to do this by hand, you have to recalculate three P stars every time you guess a temperature. And so every time you guess a temperature, you might get the correct value. And because of that, that constant iter iterative calculation and the fact that you'd have to do a lot of this calculation by hand, it makes a lot of sense to use something like GoalSeek to do all the work for you. Because now you don't have to do all these calculations, GoalSeek is gonna figure it all out. Okay? And, and so that, that's gonna wrap up this part of lecture 12. And so we've just discussed our method to solve for a bubble and dew point problem when you have an ideal solution. Okay? And so that concludes lecture 12. Stay tuned for lecture 13 coming soon.